right, guys, this is day 10. You need to have lesson eight out. Make sure you have that ready. Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Module. This is lesson eight, adding and subtracting polynomials. Classwork exercise here. Exercise means do it on your own. So pause the video, see if you can do this, and then come back and check. Okay, so here we go. How many quarters, nickels, and pennies are needed to make a dollar thirteen? Okay, well, there's all kinds of different choices. You could say 113 pennies or a nickel and eight pennies and four quarters or any combination. Uh, there's 20 nickels and a dollar, so you could say 20 nickels and 13 pennies. So there's all kinds of different answers, but if I were to use the least number, I know there's four quarters and a dollar. So I would say four quarters would make the dollar and two nickels would make 10 cents. So I'd say two nickels. So now I have a dollar 10 and three pennies would give me a dollar 13. So, we're leading up to something here. Filling in the blanks now. What is 8,943 if we spread it out like this? Well, the thousands place is eight, so that would be eight times 1,000, which is 8,000, plus nine times 100, which is 900, plus four times 10, which is 40, plus three times one, which is three, so it'd be 8,000 plus 900 plus 40 plus three, which is 8,943. And 1,000 is 10 cubed, so that eight would just be eight times 10 cubed, nine times 10 squared, four times 10, and three times one. Okay, and we're going to do it again. So now it's 8,943 equals something times 20 to the third power. Well, what is 20 to the third power? 20 times 20 is 400. 400 times 20 is 8,000. So it would be 1 times 8,000. 20 squared is 400. So it would be 2 of them, which would give me 800, right? So 20 squared is 400. Think of it this way, that's 400. Two times 400 is 800, but we have 900. So we're just finding the most we can find with this. So it's two. And we still have 100 left over, which is five times 20. Braxton was diagnosed with cord plexus carcinoma, a brain tumor. Okay. But then we have four, which 40, which is two more 20s. So that'd be five plus seven, five plus two 20s, which is seven 20s. And then finally three ones. Okay, so we took 10 squared and 10 cubed and 10, and now we have 20 cubed and 20 squared and 20 to the first. So now we're just practicing because we're leading up to polynomials. So if I now try to find fill in the blanks of this, five squared is 25. And there are four 25s in 100. So that'd be four times five squared would give me the 100. Five times two is 10. That's the tens place. And then three times one is three. So 113 is four times five squared plus two times five plus three times one. Okay, so hopefully you got those answers in doing this. And let's move on to the next portion, uh, exercise two. 
Now let's be as general as possible by not identifying which base we are in. Just call the base x. Consider the expression 1 times x cubed plus 2 times x squared plus 7 times x plus 3 times 1, or equivalently, that would be x cubed plus 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. What is the value if the expression of this expression if x equals 10? So what we're doing really is what's up here. And our x is our base. So here x would have been 10, here x would have been 20 to make this a true statement. So we're leading up to polynomial expressions. So if I wanted x to be 10, then I would just substitute 10 in for all the x's here. So it would be 10 cubed plus 2 times 10 squared plus 7 times 10 plus 3. Well, 10 cubed is 1,000. Plus 10 squared is 100 times 2 is 200. Plus 7 times 10 is 70 plus 3. Well, that's going to equal 1, 2, whoops, that's 70. It's 1273. 1273. And what would be that value if x was 20? Well, the easiest way is just multiply by 2 because if x is 10 and then we're doubling it to 20, then would we just double this? You need to be careful and not do that because of our constant. So I'm just going to substitute it in again. So I'm going to take 20 cubed. And besides that, when you cube something, it's not just doubling. So 20 cubed plus 2 times 20 squared plus 7 times 20 plus 3. So 20 cubed is 20 times 20 is 400 times 20 is 8,000. Plus 20 squared is 400 times 2 is 800. Plus 7 times 20 is 140. Plus 3. And that's going to equal 8,800 plus the 100 is 943. So as you can see, when the base doubled, you didn't just double this number and say it was 2,546. Okay, the answer is 8,943. Exercise three. When writing numbers in base 10, we only allow coefficients of zero through nine. Why is that? Okay, and the reason is, once you get 10 of a given unit, you also have one of the unit to the left of that. Okay, so if you add a number, if the coefficient's greater than 9 or 10, then it's actually adding to the coefficient in front. So if I go back and I explain that here, if I had this as 11 times 100, 11 times 100 would be 1,100 which would be 1 times 1,000 plus 1 times 100. So you're, I was, I'm adding to this one, and that's what they're explaining there. So what is the value of 22x plus 3 when x equals 5? Well, then you would say 22, substitute in the 5 for x plus 3. 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 2 is 10, plus that 1 is 11, plus 3, and it's 113. How much money is 22 nickels and 3 pennies? Well, 22 nickels and 3 pennies is $1.13. So that's basically what we're doing here. 22 nickels plus 3 cents. Part C says, what number is represented by 4x squared plus 17x plus 2 if x equals 10? So we substitute in 10. Didn't I change my color? Yes, I did. Green, 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 green. 4 times 10 squared plus 7 times 10 plus 2. 10 squared is 100 times 4 is 400. 7 times 10 is 70. 7 plus 2. So it would be 472. 
I'm going to stop him right there for a second. Guys, I don't know if you realize this, but that should have been 17 times 10. 17 times 10 is 170 plus 2, which means the actual answer is going to be 572. Oh, oh, 17. 17, so that's 170. So that moves that to 572. So I just made a mistake there, and in making that mistake, I'm actually avoiding what they're trying to explain from A. What happens if your coefficient is greater than 9? and it adds to the place in front, to the left. Okay, and that happened right here. Our coefficient of x was 17, and that added to our hundreds position because it's more than 10. B says what number is represented by 4x squared plus 17x plus 2 if x equals negative 2 or if x equals 2 thirds. We have to do this one twice. So we take 4 times negative 2 squared plus 17 times negative 2 plus 2. Well, negative 2 squared, I'm just going to show all my work here because you have to be careful with negatives. Negative 2 squared is positive 4 plus. Seven positive times a negative is negative, so that's going to be minus. And 17 times 2 is 34 plus 2. So that's 16 minus 34 plus 2. And PEMDAS says that when we're down to addition and subtraction, we work left to right. So 16 minus 34 is 18 negative plus 2, which is negative 16. Now I'm going to substitute in my two-thirds. So it's four parentheses, two-thirds squared plus 17 times two-thirds plus two. Okay, so that would be four times four-ninths plus 17 times two is 34 over three plus two. Okay, and in simplifying that, I get 16 over 9 plus 34 over 3 plus 2. All right. If I want this all in common denominators, it would be 16 over 9 plus, I needed to multiply the top and bottom here by 3. So it's 3 over 3 here. And that is going to give me... 102 over 9 plus, and if I want this to be multiplied by 9, it would be 18 divided by 9 is 2. So that's going to be 16 plus 102 and 18. So 102 plus 18 is 120 plus 16 is 136 ninths. Okay. And E. What number is represented by negative 3x squared plus... I'm going to stop him right there for just a second. Um, if I look at 136 over 9, can I reduce that in any way? Think about this. 9 goes into 13 one time. Okay. And then that would be 4 left over. So that would be 46. So I could do 5 which would be 45, which would leave one left over. So it could be 15 and one ninth. Plus square root of two X plus one half when X equals the square root of two. So let me just move this out of the way now. And I'm going to substitute in the square root of two. So it will be negative three square root of two squared plus the square root of two times x, which is the square root of 2, plus a half. So the square root of 2 squared is simply 2. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2, plus 1 half. 
negative six plus two is negative four plus half. A half is negative three and one half. Okay, so now the discussion says a polynomial expression is either one, a numerical expression, or a variable symbol, or the result of placing two previously generated polynomial expressions into the blanks of the addition operation, parentheses something plus something, or the multiplication operation, parentheses something times something. Exercise four, find each sum or difference by combining the parts that are alike. So it's four one hundreds plus two one hundreds. So I did the hundreds here. And then it's tens. So there's one ten and three tens. So tens, actually this is tens. So I'm going to color code this. So that's four one hundreds and two hundreds, one ten here, and the other one has three tens, and this has a seven ones, and this one has one ones, and then I combine like terms, four plus two, six, one plus three, four, and seven plus one is eight. So 417 plus 231 is 648. Okay, pretty basic stuff, right? But the reason they're showing this is because we're now leading up to this and we're doing the same thing. So this is a polynomial and this is a polynomial and they're being added. So we're going to do exactly what we did here and we're going to add like terms. So it's going to be 4x squared plus 2x squared plus and then my x and 3x plus. To fly a rocket ship, you need to be an optimist. It would be nice if we could have, have ads. No ask. My 7 and my 1. So we combine like terms here as well. So 4x squared plus 2x squared is 6x squared plus 3x is 4x and 7 plus 1 is 8. So my answer is 6x squared plus 4x plus 8. Okay, so now we're going to do that with part C, but we need to be careful here. This is a minus. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. I can just be careful and subtract each term, okay? or I can make that a plus and change all the signs inside of here. I will do it both ways because it's important that you understand that that's what's happening. All right, so I'm gonna start with my three X cubed. And I'm subtracting X cubed. Okay, plus, and I'm taking a negative X squared and I'm subtracting a 5x squared. And I'm just putting plus signs in between here to separate. 8 minus a negative, or there is no x, be careful there too. There's a cubed, a third degree polynomial with a power of 3, a power of 2, and then it skips a power of 1 and goes to the constant. This one has a power of three, a power of two, a power of one, and a constant. So when there is no power of one, I have to put one there, and that would be zero x minus four x. Since there's a four x here, I didn't underline these. So maybe that makes it clearer. Three x cubed, x cubed, negative x squared, five x squared. No linear term, a linear term. And then finally, eight and seven. So that would be plus eight minus a negative seven. Okay, so when I do this, three x cubed minus x cubed is two x cubed plus negative x squared minus five x squared is negative seven x squared. I don't like a plus and minus, so I just write minus seven x squared 
and then 0x minus 4x is negative 4x, so minus 4x, and then 8 minus a negative 7 is plus 7, which is 15. So my answer is 2x cubed minus, oh, that's not a 6, that's a 5. I thought that was a 6, it's a 5. Negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6x squared, and then negative x squared minus 5x squared is negative 6x squared, and then 0 minus 4, negative 4x plus 15. There, okay. Now here's another way we can do this. So I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to do it again, and we'll see if we get the same answer. So I'm going to leave my answer there, but this time I'm going to rewrite the whole thing first. And I'm going to say 3x cubed minus x squared, and I'm going to put plus 0x in there, plus 8, so I'm not skipping it. And then I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to change all of the signs in here because I changed that to a plus. So it's negative x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 7. So you can do that as well. You can change this to a plus if you change all these signs here. So it's positive, 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 negative, 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 positive. And then 3x cubed minus plus negative 3, or x cubed is 2x cubed. A negative x squared plus a negative 5x squared is a negative 6x squared. A 0x plus a negative 4x is negative 4x. And then finally, 8 plus 7 is 15. So I got the same answer, 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 4x plus 15. So these are equivalent, but they're done two different ways. I would prefer changing it to a plus and making all these opposite. So and putting in this missing term, okay? So now looking at this one, we have to distribute. We have a cube, we have a first degree, we skip the second. We have a cube, we have a constant. So we don't have to, there's no second degree in either one, so I don't. All right guys, ours is a little different than his. Ours does not have the three on the outside. So I'm gonna take a minute and just kind of work with this um, through you or work with this one with you. Um, we have to distribute that negative two into my parentheses. So I'm going to leave the 3x cubed plus 8x alone. And then I'm going to multiply negative two times x cubed gives me um, a negative 2x cubed. And a negative 2 times 12 is a negative 24. And then I go ahead and combine my like terms. So I have 3x cubed and negative 2x cubed is x cubed. I do not have um, but 8x's. So 8x minus 24. So this is what you should have. I don't need to put that in, but like, the thing I'm going to do is distribute 3x x and keep this in front. You have two times x cubed. So my like term. And then we have minus 24. I was trying to fast forward that, that way we didn't have to sit and watch him. So the answer is x cubed plus 24x minus 24. Okay. And they're just throwing different examples at us that are in different forms. So if I take a negative t squared plus a t squared, they cancel and go away. Bye bye. If I take a negative t and add 9t to it, I get 8t. If I take a 5 
and add nothing to it, I just have 5. So this is simply 8t plus 5. Now another way if that was confusing to you is to rewrite it out. So I would take this and rewrite it in standard form. So that would equal negative t squared minus t plus 5. Okay, that's That's just this term rearranged. And then I'm going to say plus, and then put this in order. So t squared comes first, plus 9t. And if you want to put a constant in because there's one over here, then I put zero. Then they're in order. And then I take negative t plus t squared. Negative t squared plus t squared is nothing. It goes away. And then negative t plus 9t is 8t, and finally, 5 plus 0 is 1. Okay, so f, I have a distribution here I'm going to focus on first, so I'm just going to rewrite this, 3p plus 1, plus 6 times p is 6p, and actually I don't need the parentheses here, so let's just leave it 3p plus 1. And then 6 times p is 6p, and positive times a negative is negative. 6 times 8 is 48. And I'm going to say plus, and then I'm going to distribute this. Or I can just distribute the minus throughout, so I can do it that way as well. A negative times a positive is negative p. A negative times a positive is negative 2. And then I combine like terms. 3p plus 6p minus p. 3 plus 6 is 9, minus 1 is 8p. 1 minus 48 is negative 47, minus 2 is negative 49. 8p minus 49. All right, guys, that's the end of the lesson. Um, make sure you have it completed before you turn it in. Have a great weekend.